Depend on items on something like the Venusaur, it might not be a bad call. If you can get that light screen support up and it's got something like weakness policy, something along those lines, I think that could kind of play into your hands. But again, the Landorus is going to be a really key a component from, I think, in dealing with the Colossal, the big threat mm -hmm. there that is going to be such an, an issue going throughout the running theme of this, uh, this, uh, this game. Yeah, Landorus can be such a destructive Pokemon. So let's jump into game one of this match and see exactly how it's going to go down between these two players. I want to see what the leads are going to be because I think this could be critical depending if there's going to be a Colossal setup or not. Joseph is leading out with the Grim Snarl and the Venusaur, whereas on Orlando's side of the field, I can see a Rillaboom and a Zashin jumping out into the fray. Yeah, the Zashian coming out, getting that Intrepid Sword boost here, getting it, that plus one attack. So we're going to become a big threat straight away. Uh, the Grim Snarl here, though, from uh, Joseph, a really nice pick because although it is going to be susceptible to potentially a fake out this turn from the Rillaboom and a double up from the Zashian, that does leave a little bit of room for your Venusaur to potentially max and start getting some attacks onto the field, especially with the grassy terrain up. You know, your G-Max Vine Lash is going to be hitting a lot harder than it would have been without that terrain boosting it. Um, so the Venusaur not in a bad position at all because if you target the Venusaur, your Grim Snarl gets a reflector. But I don't know if Joseph maybe wants to preserve the Grim Snarl for later on in this match, preserve those screens for uh, a later point potentially. Yeah, exactly. The Venusaur can capitalize on the fact that the grassy terrain is here on the field, but there's actually something you have to worry about. If the Venusaur wants to maybe Dynamax up, then those um, Bohemian Blades are going to be dealing a big chunk of damage. The Grim Snarl, however, is going to leave the field and face off that Zashin. Doesn't want to take any unnecessary damage. And I think this is a really nice play here from Joseph, bringing in the Landris to be able to fire off that Intimidate. It's going to bring the Zashin back down to neutral and then obviously apply that Intimidate to the Rillaboom as well. Looks like we're going to see a Dynamax as well, Lee. Looks like it might be that Venusaur, Lou. I think it might be, yeah. And it, it yeah. makes a lot of sense because you're going to get your, your the residual damage starting with the G-Max Vine last year that's also taking advantage of the, the grassy terrain. But, you know, you can also go for options like Max Quake as well that could be quite beneficial. Max Ooze as well into the Rillaboom if you want rid of that this turn. Yeah, so many options for that Venusaur. For the Zashin, however, it's going to be that Bohemoth Blade going straight down into the Landorus there. Does a huge chunk of damage, even though it's been taken back down to neutral. Um, it looks like it's going to be the Max Quake coming out from the Venusaur going down into the Zashin. Does a huge chunk of damage, but again, not enough to be able to pick up a KO. But these things can be critical as the turns go on. Boosting up the special defense, though, not going to be too important against two physical attackers, but I think getting that good damage onto the Zashin could be critical later on. U turn from the Rillaboom, though, wants to reset up that Intimidate, maybe come back onto field a little bit later on when it can capitalize on something like Fake Out or be down against some Pokemon it can apply some good pressure to. Yeah, and I, I think getting rid of Boom out of here now is is a nice play from Orlando. It does give him the flexibility to change up his board position, and especially with the Venusaur now, going for that Gigantamax on Joseph's side of the field, he's going to have a little bit more flexibility in how he approaches this next turn. Does he go for the Colossal, bring that in, and try and Gigantamax that? It's going to be difficult, I mean, with with something like the Landorus on the field, and especially, you know, the, the, the Venusaur that has got that special defense boost already with the Max Quake from the Venusaur. So when you, you look at it from that point of view from Joseph, it's, it's quite a smart play to just give your Venusaur a little bit extra protection almost in, a, in, in, in that sort of situation. But we are going to see the Urshifu hit the field. Probably not the Pokemon that you kind of really would like to bring. So maybe suspecting from a Landorus side, maybe a side Aqua Jet, but it's <laughs> risky doing that because if you switch in the Colossus, um, for the Zastian here, uh, you, you could potentially take a big Max Quake for your troubles and then the match gets beyond you at that point and you, you will not be able to come back. So it's going to be, you, Orlando's going to have to play this very carefully and Joseph got himself into a great spot here where he's, he's been very dominant with probably mm -hmm. not the Pokemon you would have expected in Team Preview to be with. Yeah, a lot of offensive pressure coming out from Joseph's side of the field. I think it's really interesting, like you said, the the kind of plays that Orlando has options to could be phenomenal, but if Joseph's able to read into that, he's going to be able to kind of counter it really well and deal some good destructive damage. Possibly if you're Orlando, you might want to play a little bit defensively on these next couple of turns and just try and stall out the Dynamax turns of that Venusaur. Landorus, however, is going to return, maybe to bring in another Intimidate later on and bring the Aveltal here onto the field. And those is Pokemon you're particularly excited to see, Lee, so it's great that we're able to showcase it here. Urshifu yep. is going to go for the Detect. Yeah, just protecting this turn makes a lot of sense because I think if you are the Venusaur, you may go for the G-Max Vine Lash here into that 
that Urshifu because probably the residual damage is maybe enough to get the Zash in anyway if you start chipping it where it's probably just out of range actually it looks a little bit like it's got too much but you are getting that residual damage started now which is the big key and it's going to help you out so much going forward in this match and if you can remove the Urshifu then you do remove one of the, the the big supporting aspects to um colossal you know you remove that um the ability to activate the steam engine and the weakness policy all in one go with that aqua jet support oh it's just able to hang on on four hp i mean this was a vine lash that came through that detect but i think being able to boost it up by that grassy terrain as well dealing out that super effective damage um just shows sort of how destructive this venusaur can be but also this is where things get interesting for that urshifu because it's going to go down at the end of next turn regardless if it stays on the field thanks to the residual damage of that um vine lash yeah and it could open the, the you know uh, an option for joseph here to say well if you are wanting to keep the Urshifu, then I can I can really capitalize on this turn by just attacking into that slot with my Eveltal that's probably pretty safe here because you know the Zashin's gonna go down. It's gonna get one last attack off here. Um, but I mean, it's, it will go down to the residual damage. So it's not really gonna get much more out of this game. It's whether or not you want to potentially risk bringing in something like Rillaboom if you're Orlando and getting taken down by a big flying type attack from the Eveltal that could come out this turn. Well, Rillaboom's going to regain the action a little bit here. Um, Zashun going to go for the Behemoth Blade once again, targeting down into that Eveltal that has joined the field. So leaving Venusaur unchecked for this remaining turn of the Dynamax. Um, it's going to be... Oh, it looks like it is coming out the Oblivion Wing from the Veltor. Going to target down into that opposing Rillaboom and deal some super effective damage to Rillaboom. Not being able to join the battle as freely as it would like to on this occasion. Of course, this Venusaur able to go once again for its final max move. It's going to be that Max Quake into the Zashin. It's going to be more than enough to be able to remove it from play. Yeah, that's a big play there, you know. I mean, it's nice getting the damage onto the Eveltal here, but knowing that you're, you've not got that Intrepid Sword boost on your Zashin at this point, it's, it makes it difficult to think that you could probably pick the knockup out there. And, you know, the Eveltal has an easy turn where it can go for the Oblivion Wing into the, the Urshifu slot. And if the Urshifu switches out for the Rillaboom, then you, you know you're going to get, like, a really good return uh, for, for that move into a pretty easy situation and uh, not attacking into the Venusaur as well allows it one more max turn so giving a special defense boost as well to the the Avelta, which could really help it out against something like the Colossal in this end game here but uh, Orlando able to get the Colossal out into the field able to get through those max turns from the Venusaur but uh, still a lot of work to do I think you, you kind of need to get the um, the Urshifu onto the field as soon as possible to maybe help you out get that weakness policy and steam engine boost going but the Venusaur is going to be able to get an attack off this next turn potentially but there is fake out here from Orlando's side that can support the Colossal for at least this next turn yeah, it certainly can help for this first turn of the Dynamax on Orlando's side of the field. Yes, you do kind of want your uh, Colossal normally boosted up with Steam Engine and Weakness Policy, but I think it is time to be able to Dynamax here. Joseph's sort of used here, so he hasn't got access to it anymore. And when you can apply it's still something like the G-Max Volcliff down onto that opposing Eveltal, it's not going to appreciate taking that Rock-type damage, and then you get the residual effects as well. Going for that Fake Out into the opposing Venusaur as well will put it in range of those residual effects a little bit later on um, at the end of this turn, so you can remove it from play. Rillaboom, however, for its efforts, is going to go down to that second Oblivion Wing due to the critical hit as well. And this is where Colossal now, if it wants to go for that G-Max Volcalith, can deal really good damage and get those residual effects. So things can look a little bit more positive here for Orlando. Just the number count on the Pokemon is the difficult thing. Yeah, it is very difficult. And wow, you can just see the special defense boost that that Eveltal gained through that Venusaur getting that additional um, Gigantamax turn this really helped because you know without the weakness policy boost the Velta taking that attack just extremely well I mean it's going to be able to stick around on the field now and really put a lot of pressure onto at least the Urshifu the next turn um, and as long as the Landorus is still you know kicking around it, it's going to be very difficult and also that Joseph does have Grimstall to come in and we don't know if Grimstall has something like Fake Out which could be you know pivotal in this next turn to preventing the Urshifu from going for that that Aqua Jet which is going to be a big detriment if Orlando can get that activated and set up yeah, Grimmsnarl is critical here. Even if it doesn't have something like Fake Out, going for something like a Thunder Wave into that Urshifu could potentially then bring about the Paralysis Chance. Or again, even just setting up something like a Light Screen will be able to just protect Joseph's Pokemon a little bit more from the Special Attack of Colossal, even if it is able to get the boosts up a little bit higher. Yeah, the, the, the Aqua Jet 
Yeah, if you've not got the fake out, then you can't really prevent that, which makes it very difficult, doesn't it? And uh, here we go, Lou. Colossal <laughs> is going to be in full form here as it gets that activation of the steam engine and its weakness policy, which I mean it'll outspeed everything on the field. But like you say, the light screen support or something like Thunder Wave here is a, a pivotal real support option here that um, Joseph is going to be able to utilize and rely on. Yeah, the Colossal able to break through though, goes for that max flare, gonna change up the weather as well and bring the sun onto the field, just making those max flares even more powerful going forward. Um, damage going down into both the Urshifu and the Colossal here. Um, you know, something like a Snarl, they're gonna be reducing the special attack from the Colossal, but of course having that weakness policy boost, it's still gonna be at a positive score in terms of its special attack. Yeah, and like the, the survival there from the Veltel is really impressive, you know, being able to take that, that weakness policy boosted Max Flare um, and then fire back with a, a Snarl as well, which kind of helps mitigate the weakness policy boost. Um, we have got Landorus to come in for Joseph. Uh, always a good Pokemon to have against it, and especially if there is light screen support from the from mm. the Grim Snarl, it might be able to, to, to kind of help support it, get an Earthquake off, and that might just be enough to uh, close this match out if the Landorus is able to take an attack, of course, from this Colossal, first of all. Yeah, that's the thing. If Landorus is able to survive, then it can deal out some really good damage here. Colossal, of course, does have their paralysis chance. Its HP is looking slightly weaker here, so something like an Earthquake will be able to deal a huge chunk of damage. You have to watch out for that Grim Snarl, though. Again, it can go for, like you said, the Light Scream. If it's got something um, like Spirit Break as well, that's going to be affecting the damage output of that Colossal. But Colossal breaking through any Paralysis Chance goes for that Max Flare and picks up the KO against the Landorus. And in such a dramatic turn of events here, it looks like Colossal is standing really, really strong. Yeah, yeah, it's still kind of, you know, um, just getting that steam engine boost, you know, even if the, the speed is halved, it's still, you know, outspeeding the majority of the format um, without any additional speed control on, on Joseph's side of the field. Uh, the, the max turns have ended. It's going to be interesting to see if, if Grimsnall can kind of come up, overcome all adversity here. You know, the Colossal's not got much health left but it still doesn't want to be taking like, heat waves in the sun. But here we go, there is the first paralysis of the Colossal Rain, and these Spirit Breaks are definitely helping the Grimmsnarl out for the, the duration of the rest of this match. Lowering that special attack uh, makes it a lot easier to manage, but the, uh, the residual damage on top of that <laughs> does like, throw it back the other way. It does make it a little bit more difficult overall, but more times Orlando's Colossal's fully paralyzed, obviously the better for Joseph. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly not over. Things could definitely um, get interesting with those paralysis. Um, it looks like, however, there was an avoid there coming out. So Grim Snarl able to dodge out the way and go for the Spirit Break. And it looks like only one more Spirit Break is what is needed to be able to pick up a KO against this Colossal. So I think it all comes down to this turn, Lee. Yeah, that's really unfortunate, the miss there. I think a Heat Wave there missing on the Grim Snarl, which would have done a really nice chunk of damage, you know, and, and maybe put this match in Orlando's favor here. It does connect this time. We'll find out how much it does. Just not enough, is it? Even after the Spirit Breaks here, is uh, Joseph going to be able to kind of eke this one out with the, the Grim Snarl, the most unlikely Pokemon of them all, <laughs> being able to kind of just clinch game one for Joseph. Extremely well played by both players, but Joseph taking an early 1-0 lead in this set. Anything mm -hmm. can change in this next one. Yeah, let's jump right into game two and see exactly how our players are going to be able to adapt in the face of Colossal or the face of Grimmsnarl, depending on which side <laughs> of the field you are on. Going to be changing things up for Joseph. That Grimmsnarl's coming out in front once again, but this time paired up with Metagross. Orlando, however, going straight out with that Colossal strategy paired up with the Urshifu. Yeah, you know, we saw in, in, in the first game for Orlando, you kind of very hesitant when to bring the Colossal and diving straight in for it there now in this game too. Needing to get a result, you know. Um, we do see the Metagross and the, the Grimmsnarl come out, the, the one thing. Uh, the, the, the Colossal does have to worry about is obviously the, uh, the Thunder Wave again. It's going to be a detriment to it. And um, also screen support going to really help support the Metagross as well. Metagross is going to be one of those Pokemon that isn't going to enjoy taking Max Flares. Um, but if you do go for your Max uh, G Max Volcalith attack, it does give the Metagross a little bit of room in that situation to potentially get an attack back onto the Colossal like a Max Quake. So it's not as easy for Orlando to really get this set up here as he's wanting to. Yeah, well, Colossus is going to leave the field, not going to be the time to get set up, and Rillaboom is going to join, going to be able to apply that fake-up pressure going forward in this next turn, and just set the grassy terrain out here on the field. So it's going to be interesting to see what Urshifu is going to be able to do without that kind of Colossal setup in play, so it's going to be going for a different strategy. Looks like, however, we're going to see a Dynamax straight away here, um, coming out from Joseph. 
Yeah, it looks like it's going to be the Metagross in it. I would say we're going to probably see like something along the same lines as we saw in game one with how he, he utilized Venusaur where you, you, you took advantage of the Max Quakes, get these special defense boosts because against something like Colossal, um, with Metagross with plus three special defense and then a light screen support on top of that makes it extremely difficult to break through a Pokemon like Metagross, you know, so it would make sense for Joseph to be going down this route, maybe targeting down into the Urshifu here, predicting that we do see a Colossal switch out, but maybe not as well. And the Rillaboom switch from Orlando is kind of a nice way to mitigate a potential Max Quake coming into that slot. Yeah, and despite the critical hits that Surging Strikes gives Urshifu, it's not going to be able to deal a lot of damage to that opposing Metagross. Rillaboom going to be able to take the Max Quake really well here, however, though. Colossal would not have been able to do that as well. So a nice switch in from Orlando here to be able to take that. But Joseph still being able to get that special defense boost up on his two Pokemon out on the field. And that could be critical when Colossal is able to rejoin the match. Yeah, and that's the big thing, you know, the, 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 Orlando's really only got one kind of strategy to go down and that is getting the Colossal set up uh, with an, either with an Aqua Jet or just getting the steam engine activated, but that is your kind of main plan. Um, the one thing that Joseph's doing right now is, is very, you know, it's making it very difficult for that, that issue for, um, the, the uh, Colossal to come onto the field for one, but also when it does come onto the field to be able to get the damage that it requires to be that impactful that we know and have seen it do that in the past. Yeah, Vanishfu, just keep going with these Surging Strikes, just going to be chipping away at this Metagross turn after turn. Grimmsnarl, of course, not going to be able to do anything this turn, thanks to the Fake Out from that Rillaboom. But the Metagross, however, is going to try and get rid of the Rillaboom here with that Max Hailstorm. It's not enough to pick up the KO, that but does a significant amount of damage. And obviously, changing up the weather, those chips of ice are going to come into effect as well. Yeah, changing the weather up and the additional chip is always going to be nice and maybe is it going to be enough to take down the Rillaboom here? Going to be very close, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Ooh, just hanging on. So the Grassy Terrain going to be able to recover a little bit of that off. But yeah, nice to be able to do that. Get some damage onto the Rillaboom now. It, it takes away an option of, of fake out support. And you know, as long as the Rillaboom and the Urshifu are out in the field, uh, you are stalling out the, 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 the max turns on Joseph's mm -hmm. side of the field. But the thing is that Joseph's really kind of making the most out of these max turns we've already seen him get the special defensive boost already onto his metagross if he can get another one on and maybe get the knockout onto the urshifu here um with the double up save from the grim snarl we've already seen it run uh, spirit break um it would be a very kind of good uh, return here because the rillaboom is not really in a position now where it's going to be able to do that much work going forward with how low health it's got yeah, Urshifu just going straight up for the Detect here, just going to protect itself, try and stall out this very last turn of the Dynamax. It's going to be a Nullamax Quake though, coming out from Metagross, targeting down into that Urshifu. Oh, you can see how little it does through the Detect here. Um, of course, interesting as well, trying to break away that Focus Sash on the Urshifu, because even though you get the Hail, the Grassy Terrain is regaining that. So if you're Joseph, you really want to try and make sure that's broken so you can pick up a KO a little bit later on. Rillaboom, however, sensing that it is in danger on 4 HP from the hail, wants to get out of there by going for that U-turn. And it does now allow Orlando the opportunity to bring that Colossal back into the fray. The Dynamax turn to the Metagross are ending. With Urshifu on the field as well, it could potentially be time to set up. Yeah, it feels like a really perfect time for Orlando to get that Aqua Jet and get the Colossal going for that G-Max. But especially with the Metagross now, it half health it's still got plus two special defense it's got the light screen supporting it as well so it's going to be easy to take down but it's still not going to enjoy a max flare coming out at all this turn and orlando set himself up perfectly but does have to worry about the thunder wave as well it's still a big threat from the grim snarl so can you get around that do you worry about that that's something else to think about as well but joseph at the moment has only showed two pokemon he's had two pokemon out he's got two pokemon left in the back to utilize so he's got a lot of options left where orlando's really made uh, the most out of a an awkward position to get himself set up with the Colossal back onto the field. The Max turn's gone and Colossal in a great position now to get that weakness policy kind of set up and uh, get the, um, the, the, the the weakness policy activated. Yeah, it certainly is the time to really commit to that Colossal setup here. Like you said, Lee, you've been able to get rid of your opponents. Dynamax turns here, and yes, they still have some Pokemon, but you've sort of shipped away at the health reasonably well. I think the critical thing here, though, is Joseph's able to get that light screen up and those Max Quakes. It's going to be difficult to take down the Metagross and the Grimmsnarl, but if Colossal can get itself boosted up, maybe try and reset that weather as well with the Max Flare. And obviously, the residual damage as well that comes out from G-Max Volcliff, that's going to be able to chip away at Joseph's Pokemon as well. 
Yeah, but like we said earlier, Lou, you know, you go for that G-Max Volcolith, as good as the residual damage is, it does then give the Metacross a little bit of room to function because it's not really threatened by the Rock-type attack. It, it really is only threatened by the, 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 the Max Flare, which you kind of need to prioritize going for as soon as possible, in my opinion. But uh, that Aqua Jet does a lot of damage, doesn't it? It is going to activate the Steam Engine and the Weakness Policy and put Colossal in a great position going into this next turn. Yeah, really big damage, but it could be kind of a high-risk, high-reward strategy if Colossal is able to try and pull this game through for Orlando. Colossal is going to be paralyzed once again by the Grim Snarl, though, so that could always be a little bit of a difficult thing for Colossal if it gets paralyzed. But it goes for that Max Flare down into the Metagross. Looks like it's able to pick up a clean KO against it. Yeah, and just the, the damage that the Metagross had already taken prior, you know, from the Urshifu there, the, the um, Surgeon Strikes, just enough to tip it over the edge here. The Special Defense Boost is not enough to quite do the work that you kind of needed it to do. Yeah, Urshifu really helping out earlier with those Surging Strikes. Although they didn't deal a huge amount of damage, particularly as the Metagross was in Dynamax, it was critical to be able to help Colossal get that KO. Then you don't have to worry about taking a potential Stomping Tantrum from that Metagross either, and it just removes one of the threats from the field. Joseph now forced to bring in the Aveltal. This is Pokemon's not going to have those Max Quake boosts. So we'll be able to, you know, if it does get something like the G-Max Volcalith, it's going to take a big amount of damage comparatively to what we saw in Game 1. Yeah, that's the problem here. You know, the Paralysis is not really helping out too much in this situation. It is going to be able to get that G-Max Volcalith off now. Getting rid of the Metagross that last turn was, was really key. And if you're able to get rid of the, the Veltal this one turn, they probably won't take it down. We've seen how like defensively built the Veltal is, but you're going to be doing enough damage to put it in range from, you know, something like the, uh, the G-Max Volcalith residual damage here. And if the Urshifu decides to protect, then you don't have a means to pr potentially be able to, to get any recovery either through the uh, the Oblivion Wing that we saw utilizing in that first game. Yeah, exactly. Orlando really taking every second as well to think what he wants to do with this Colossal. Urshifu going to go for the Detect once again, just protecting itself in this particular turn as Colossal does go for that G-Max Volcalith, breaking through any paralysis and targeting down on the Avelta. Does a significantly larger amount of damage than it did in Game 1. And of course, sending those rocks out on the field as well. The residual chip damage can be everything in these matches. Yeah, and that's that's really what you want to do with the, the Colossal. You know, Orlando's done it beautifully here. He's, he's been very patient. He's got the Colossal onto the field at the right time to get the Aqua Jet, uh, you know, activating the, the weakness policy, the steam engine. He's really taking advantage of it now. And the G, you know, the, the, the residual damage here, like we've said, just prior to this turn, if you go into the Aveltal, it's going to do a significant amount of damage and really be able to kind of cut down the ability of Joseph's Pokemon and what they're able to do going forward. I think it was well calculated as well by Orlando with that particular detect on the Urshifu. It was enough to regain um, full HP. So the Focus Sash is going to be intact as well going forward. And that could be critical if maybe Urshifu has to take an attack in order to deal out some really big damage. Yeah, um, that's the big thing here, you know. Uh, do you actually do you go after the, uh, the, the Grim Snarl here if you are Orlando, you know. If you get rid of the Grim Snarl this turn, then you don't have to worry about an end game similar to the last one. Um, and maybe is Aquajet enough to get the Evelta? Like, probably not, but probably uh, uh, Surgeon Strikes probably would be. But um, if you're going after the Grim Snarl here, then it does leave the door open for the Evelta to potentially get an Oblivion Wing and get that health back, which we know you kind of really don't want it to because the longer it stays on the field, the more effective it's going to be, essentially. Yeah, and that's exactly what we see here. The Oblivion Wing connecting down into that Urshifu. Thankfully, it did have its Focus Sash intact, so it's going to hang around for another turn, but you can see the amount of HP that Avelta was able to gain back just from that one move. However, the close combat is going to be able to kind of counter that out a little bit and once again Avelta is now in another precarious situation it can't go for such a big Oblivion Wing again into that Urshifu in the next turn because it's only on one HP and this residual damage really chipping away Avelta in a very dangerous situation and Grimmsnarl going to be KO'd yeah, and, and you know, it all comes down to what the last Pokemon is for Joseph. Is it the Landorus again? Because if it is the Landorus, or even the Venusaur, you know, the Venusaur could come in and take advantage of the, of the sun, but it is the Landorus to come in. Um, and the, 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 the paralysis on both the Colossal and the, uh, the Ocean Food definitely helping out here. And the, the Landorus got a free turn to go for potentially an Earthquake. And that will clear the field, you know, um, and put Joseph right back into this game. But going to be difficult and against the Colossal. Colossal now relying on 
with something like Heat Wave to hit, which we've seen in game one. It does have a bit of a, a lower accuracy compared to some of the more 100% um, moves, so it mm -hmm. can miss and it can cost you at times. But you've got to hope if you're Orlando that your Heat Waves hit, and if you're Joseph, really here you need the, the, the Heat Waves to miss. So all eyes once again are on that colossal. It really comes down <laughs> to whether it's going to be able to hit those heat waves or not in this situation. You know, Landerus again looking to be quite strong here, throwing across that intimidate as well um, against that opposing Urshfu. But Urshfu not really going to be able to do anything at all thanks to the sucker punch coming out from that Aveltal. So now it really is all eyes once again on this colossal. It does go for the heat wave. It does manage to connect on both the opposing Pokemon. So Aveltal will be removed from the field and that Landorus does take a significant chunk of health. But it's going to be able to fire off the Earthquake and remove the Colossal from the field. You know, there was no grassy terrain in effect anymore to kind of weaken the offensive output of that Earthquake. Things certainly got a little bit interesting in that turn. Yeah, and just showing how well the Landorus is built here, just being able to take that attack so well. But um, there is still two Pokemon left for Orlando, you know, the, the, the Rillaboom and you know it's coming, Lou. It's going to be that Zashian, which is going to be just a little bit too much for the Landorus to mm -hmm. deal with. So um, Orlando playing this one extremely well and preserving this Zashian right until this last endpoint where it's, you know, can come in, uh, get this attack boost off, not worry about Intimidate support, not worry about Thunder Wave uh, disruption or anything like that and able to close this game out quite comfortably um, is, is just detriment to showing how well Orlando's playing this, this, this uh, GMAX Colossal team. Yeah, this is really perfect for um, the Zashin here. You know, you've got the fake-out support as well from the Rillaboom, and I think that's why Joseph was able to lock in the forfeit there and take this to... Joseph to kind of get a handle on, almost. Yeah, it's just the constant threat of that Colossal. So let's jump into game three and see exactly if Colossal is going to be leading out in the front or maybe hiding away in the back a little bit or even coming at all to see if it's going to join this game of three. It's going to be the Grimmsnarl and the Venusaur for Joseph, whereas on Orlando's side, the Zashin and the Rillaboom. Yeah, you can see that Joseph's reverting back to what worked for him in game one so well with the, uh, the Venusaur here. And uh, Orlando going back to that same lead again. It's like, um, you know, with the Rillaboom coming out with the Zashin. Um, but again, the, the Zashin, I think if you're Orlando going into this game, you were maybe a bit too passive on the Venusaur um, in game one. That kind of ended up costing you a little bit. So if you if you go after that, that Pokemon a little bit harder this game, I think it might work out a little bit better for you. But uh, Joseph will be aware of that um, and you know the one thing that you don't want to do if you're Orlando is allow that Zashin to get Thunder Waves going into uh, either this turn or the next one. Yeah, I think this is very similar to that game one strategy um, from both of our players here. Um, the Zashin obviously getting that Intrepid Sword boost. If you're Joseph, you're going to want to try and remove that as quickly as possible, maybe bringing in something like the Landorus from the back to apply that Intimidate. Um, again, that also benefits um, against your Rillaboom. It won't be able to deal as much offensive pressure from Orlando's side. And Venusaur once again sitting in a pretty good situation where it could go for something like a G-Max Vine Lash. Yeah, and if you start that residual damage now, you're in a, in a nice position to just start really, you're like taking advantage of the grassy terrain, but you're also getting the, that residual damage ticking down uh, at the start of the game, which is really going to be very useful to try and get rid of some of the more threatening Pokemon, like the Urshifu, like the Zacian, that are causing so many issues for uh, Joseph going forward in this match. Yeah, we're going to see the Gigantamax Venusaur here in the fray, but no switching in here. It's just going to be the Thunder Wave coming out straight away into that Zashin, just going to be lowering its speed and giving it that paralysis chance. Max Quake coming out from the Venusaur, going to be doubling down into the Zashin. We know how much of a threat it is and takes it down to just 25 HP. Yeah, just, just just barely missing the knockout there, Lou, and um, it's really you know able to take it. But the the thunder wave, then not something that you want onto his Asian, and it is going to be able to get an attack off. But you know this is going to be the last attack that potentially is able to utilize this game. Nice to see it going after the Venusaur. And wow, it is able to pick up that one hit KO onto the Venusaur there, um, which is huge. Absolutely amazing play. Um, phenomenal to see as well that Venusaur just being taken down so quickly. It gave Orlando so many problems in game one um, and then just being able to deal with it so well here in this game three really does just show you how well he's been able to adapt going through this set. Yeah, I, I, I didn't realize it was a U-turn that actually picked a knock about. I thought it was a Behemoth Blade that actually got it there, but put it such a so close range there for the U-turn to actually pick up the knockout, which was uh, just incredible, making the use out of your Zashi in there and, you know, getting rid of a big threat at the same time as you're now going to be able to, with your Zashin, actually put a lot of pressure onto the Grimmsnarl, the other Pokemon on Joseph's side of the field that is causing a lot of disruption. If you can potentially remove that this turn, 
um, that that goes a long way into uh, really making and, and creating a winning condition for you in this match. Yeah, exactly. And of course, when in your game three situation as well, you don't really have a game to fall back on. So you have to make sure that you're putting a Pokemon in a position where you can really start to counteract. And I think having the Pokemon like the Aveltal here on the field, we know that has access to something like that Sucker Punch that could easily remove the Zashin from play here. Yeah, that's it. And you, you want to, if you can remove the Zashin here, I think you need to because you can't afford to take another Behemoth Blade, especially a plus one. And um, by doing that, you kind of, you know, the one thing, if you do take it down, it does create an opening for um, for the Colossal to potentially come in, which is another thing with the Urshifu out in the field that you don't want. But by concentrating down on the Urshifu here, you are giving the Zashin a little bit more room, which kind of almost backfires uh, because the more room and the more attacks that the Zashin is going to be able to get off the more Pokemon it's going to be able to remove from the field. And you can see here, goes after Ooh. the Grimmsnarl, picks up the knockout, and the Grimmsnarl not going to be that support option any any longer in this in this match. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's a very difficult situation for Joseph. I think losing the Venusaur turn one um, in, the, in the fashion that he did to the Zashin and um, the, the Rillaboom U-turn made it very difficult kind of to come back from. But it's not over yet, you know. You've still got the Landorus and the Evelta that can do some work going forward in this match. Because... The Earthquake is reduced damage because of the grassy mm -hmm. terrain, but you should still be able to get the Zash in and maybe an Oblivion Wing. Well, an Earthquake Oblivion Wing will be able to get the Urshifu here. I mean, the Zashin has just been the absolute star here at the moment, you know, being able to pull through that paralysis and pick up such damage with the Behemoth Blade. We're going to see, however, the Urshifu jump straight into the action with those surging strikes, going to connect down onto that opposing Landorus. Of course, there are three of them, and they are all guaranteed critical hits. So, unfortunately for the Landorus, it's going to fall victim to this Urshifu, leaving a Veltal here to see if it can try and pull it back a little bit for Joe. We didn't see a Sucker Punch come out here. Instead, the Aveltal is just going to jump up into the sky and go for that Oblivion Wing, just going to try and keep the HP regaining as much as possible on the Aveltal as it can. It's going to take down the Focus Sash, though, on that opposing Urshifu. Yeah, and I think if you're Joseph here, yeah, you're kind of relying on a, or hoping for a, a fully paralysis on the on the Zash in here, but don't actually see that. Um, and, you know, because it is that bit more defensively built, it isn't as fast as some of the other, you know, as fast as potentially Velta could be. So giving the, the jump to Urshifu there to allow it to get the, the attack onto Landorus. Um, but even with saying that, it's got the Sash, so even being able to remove it from the field and protect your Landorus at the same time can be a very difficult spot, really. So, um, um, Zashin still just doing a number every time it's a, a, able to hit and the grassy terrain just supporting it every turn now. Yeah, and Urshifu will go down to this opposing um, Aveltal, but Zashin just in such a strong position here. If it's able to break through, and it does with the Behemoth Blade, going to be able to connect down onto that opposing Aveltal here. Going to be able to deal a huge chunk of damage and looks like it's taken the game for Orlando. Yeah, massive swing here from game one where, you know, Joseph came out and, and it looked like he kind of had a handle, knew what he wanted to do on this match. and. Um, then changed